here comes the magic school bus. That means that Miss Frizzle is about to take us on another weird trip. You have no idea what she makes us go through, but you're about to find out, thanks to Joanna Cole, who wrote about us in her book, The Magic School Bus in the Time of the Dinosaurs, and Bruce Deegan, who drew the pictures. <laughs> If you want to come along, climb on board and bring your book. Not all of the words in this book are on this tape, but you can still follow along. Just turn the page when you hear this sound. It was visitor's day at our school. Parents, relatives, and friends were coming that afternoon to see our work. In Miss Frizzle's class, we were making the whole room into dinosaur land. I love Visitor's Day. My parents are coming. My grandma is coming. I hope she likes my project. Phoebe had made a model of a dinosaur skeleton out of chicken bones and clay. Suddenly, Miss Frizzle said, Please pay attention, children. I have wonderful news. I wonder what the good news is. Maybe it's lunchtime already. Maybe we don't have to learn all these dinosaur names like Coelophysis, Diplodocus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Apatosaurus, and Allosaurus. Our class has been invited to a dinosaur dig, explained the Frizz. We had been studying dinosaurs and a lot of kids had written reports, like Carlos, for instance. Dinosaurs were reptiles by Carlos. Dinosaurs were a group of special prehistoric reptiles. Prehistoric means anything that happened before people started writing history. Thanks, Dorsey Ann. Reptiles are animals that have backbones, have scaly skin, lay eggs, and are cold-blooded. Reptiles of today are snakes, crocodiles, turtles, and lizards. We'll be leaving right away, children. We're leaving now? I guess Miss Frizzle forgot about Visitor's Day. She never forgot anything before. As we went out, one kid grabbed the video camera. Others took along model dinosaurs for good luck. When you have the wackiest teacher in school, you need all the luck you can get. We couldn't believe we had to get on that rickety old school bus again. Kids held their lucky dinosaurs tight and hoped for the best. My lucky dinosaur is Tyrannosaurus rex. My lucky dinosaur is Stegosaurus. My lucky dinosaur is wondering if this old bus will make it. As we rolled onto the highway, Miss Frizzle shouted from the driver's seat. We're on our way to fossil country, kids. Who knows what a fossil is? Luckily, we had done our homework. We knew that a fossil is anything left from a prehistoric animal or plant. There are five kinds of dinosaur fossils by Alex. Bones, teeth, footprints, skin prints, and eggs and nests. In the back of the bus, Ralph was looking at a comic book. It showed a dinosaur chasing a caveman. This story is make-believe. There were no dinosaurs in the time of cave people. No people ever saw a dinosaur by Flory. When early humans appeared on the Earth, dinosaurs had already been dead for millions of years. People found out about dinosaurs from fossils. After we had been driving for a long time, we came to a desert where people were working. Ms. Frizzle said this was the dinosaur dig. The people were paleontologists, scientists who study prehistoric life. They were digging for fossils. How did dinosaurs become fossils? Carmen told us. How a dead dinosaur could become a fossil by Carmen. First, the dead body sank in a river and rotted away. The bones were covered with sand. In time, the sand turned into rock. Later, the bones became hard as rock, too. Carmen, did most dinosaurs turn into fossils? No, Alex. Dead dinosaurs usually rotted or were eaten. 
dinosaurs lasted for 150 million years on Earth. Weren't they amazing, Arnold? It's amazing that I've lasted this long in Miss Frizzle's class. Where have dinosaur fossils been found? By Phil. Everywhere on Earth, even within the Arctic Circle and near the South Pole. Looking for dinosaur fossils? Try Western North America by Keisha. There are so many dinosaur fossils in the West that the area has been called a fossil treasure trove. Everyone at the dig was working hard, using all kinds of tools to separate the fossils from the rocks around them. I see you are still interested in dinosaurs, Jeff. Valerie, I haven't seen you since high school. Let's get this on video. She calls him Jeff. He calls her Valerie. They went to high school together? That must have been in prehistoric times. The paleontologists told us they had found the fossil bones of a duck-billed dinosaur called Myasaura. What a strange name. A dinosaur gets its name from by Carmen. One, something special about the way it lived. Myasara means good mother lizard. Myasara took care of their babies. Two, a dinosaur can also get its name from something special about its body. Deinonychus means terrible claw. Or three, from the place where it was found. Unanosaurus was found in Yunnan, China. By the way, the scientist who is lucky enough to find the first fossils of a dinosaur gets to name it. How can we tell which bones are which? By Shirley. Paleontologists compare dinosaur bones with the bones of other animals. For example, if you know the thigh bone of a bird or a lizard, or a dog, or a human, you will be able to tell the thigh bone of a dinosaur. The paleontologist seemed sad. We were looking for fossil eggs. They said. But we haven't found any yet. We found the bones of some Myasaura dinosaurs, Valerie. We were hoping to find their nests. I didn't know her name was Valerie. We saw a gleam in Miss Frizzle's eye. Want to look for some Myasaura nests, kids? She shouted. She rushed us onto the bus. But we just got here. I want to look at that crane. I want to see the dinosaur bone. See you later, Jeff. And we drove off. We hadn't gone far when Miss Frizzle stopped the bus. We heard a clicking sound. She turned a dial on the dashboard, and the bus began to change. It looked like a giant alarm clock. Miss Frizzle said it was a time machine. Now I've seen everything. This bus is getting ridiculous. Myasaura were some of the very last dinosaurs on Earth. The hands on the clock started moving backward. One hour back, one day back, one year back. Outside the windows, the desert was whizzing by. One thousand years, one million years. We're on our way to the time of the Myasaura. Hang on, class, yelled the frizz. Ring, ring, the alarm went off. We heard Miss Frizzle say, Oops, we had a little machine trouble. We went too far back in time, but it's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? We missed the time of the Myasaur by millions of years. Class, we're in the late Triassic period, the time of the early dinosaurs. You mean we're in the same place, but in another time? You mean this is what the desert looked like 220 million years ago? Wow, it's a jungle out there. At that time, there was one giant continent on the Earth. It had rainy jungles, many deserts, and warm temperatures. There was no winter anywhere.
The frizz pointed to some dinosaurs that were hunting on the banks of a river. Their name is Coelophysis, she said. These early dinosaurs were small and light. The giant dinosaurs did not develop until later. Coelophysis have excellent teeth for eating meat. Their teeth have saw edges, like steak knives. Try not to look like a steak. We knew about dinosaur teeth from Phoebe's report. Fossil teeth tell what dinosaurs ate by Phoebe. Sharp, pointy teeth come from meat eaters like Tyrannosaurus rex, Allosaurus, and Troodon. Odd-shaped teeth come from plant eaters like Camarasaurus, Plateosaurus, and Stegosaurus. Suddenly, a large reptile rose out of the water and opened its huge mouth. That is not a dinosaur, Ms. Frizzle said. It's a phytosaur, a crocodile-like reptile. The phytosaur caught a little dinosaur and pulled it underwater. We knew that the phytosaur wasn't really being mean; it was just hunting for food. Still, we wanted to get back on the bus pronto, but Ms. Frizzle said we had to learn about Triassic plant life. <coughs> We were examining some ferns. I just love Triassic plants, class. Don't you? When? Do you hear something? You mean those crunching sounds? Miss Frizzle isn't the only one who loves Triassic plants. Miss Frizzle shouted, "Look at those terrific prosauropods! They were the first dinosaurs to eat plants." A sudden downpour caught us by surprise, but the dinosaurs went right on eating. We ran for the bus. In a tropical forest, rains are frequent and heavy, Arnold. Now she tells me. Then Miss Frizzle called, "Get ready to go forward in time, kids." <coughs> The last thing we saw before we took off were some small furry animals. Miss Frizzle said they were the first mammals. Rachel and Wanda had done reports on mammals. The first mammals lived with dinosaurs, by Rachel. The first true mammals lived in the late Triassic. They were furry, rat-like animals. What are mammals, by Wanda? Mammals are animals that have backbones, have hair or fur, are warm-blooded, and feed their babies with mother's milk. The hands on the clock moved ahead, and the Triassic rainforest whizzed out of sight. When will we see myasaur eggs? Myasaura lived 160 million years from now. Let's see if we can find them. Ring, ring! The alarm went off, and we heard Ms. Frizzle say, "Oh no! We had stopped too soon. It was the late Jurassic period, the age of the giants. What was the Earth like then? Well, the continents were drifting apart." There were swampy, low-lying plains. It was the beginning of the inland seas and the Atlantic Ocean. There were warm temperatures everywhere. Here are some interesting tree trunks. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Notice these sauropods, children," said Ms. Frizzle. They were kind of impossible to miss. They were the largest land animals that ever lived. Amanda Jane had done a report on them. What were sauropods? By Amanda Jane. Sauropods were heavy, long-necked dinosaurs. They walked on four legs and ate plants. Some kinds of sauropods were Ultrasaurus, Brachiosaurus, 
Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, and Seismosaurus. 60 million years have passed since we were here last. Look! Those sauropods are swallowing their food whole! Their teeth are not good for chewing, Phoebe. They swallow stones to grind up food in their stomachs. It must take a lot of plants to feed a giant sauropod. Sauropods must spend most of their time eating. What a life. Under a pile of leaves, we found some dinosaur eggs just about to hatch. We know dinosaurs laid eggs by Amanda Jane. Fossil dinosaur eggs have been found. Inside some, there are tiny skeletons of babies. How big were dinosaur eggs by Molly? The largest dinosaur egg we have found was about the size of a football. Are they the Myasaura eggs? No, Keisha. Myasaura did not live in the Jurassic period. They came much later. Nearby, some stegosaurs, plated dinosaurs, were eating plants. One of the stegosaurs had a hurt leg. Suddenly, an Allosaurus approached the wounded stegosaurus. Stegosaurus' spike tail lashed out. It missed Allosaurus by an inch. What would happen next? We held our breath. <laughs> Allosaurus darted close and took a big bite. <laughs> then it moved back and waited. Stegosaurus got weaker and weaker. It had become food for Allosaurus. Class, whatever Allosaurus does not eat, we'll feed other dinosaurs, too. At my old school, we never got this close to predators. I guess that Stegosaurus won't become a dinosaur fossil. No, it's becoming a dinosaur dinner. As we ran for the time machine, Ms. Frizzle pointed out some strange birds. The first birds appeared in the late Jurassic, she said. Birds are living dinosaurs, by Shirley. Most paleontologists say today's birds are direct descendants of dinosaurs. Birds, past and present, by Michael. Like dinosaurs, the first birds had teeth, clawed fingers, and bony tails. Today's birds don't. We still didn't find myasaur nests. Come on, let's go look for them. Then Miss Frizzle pushed the fast forward button and shouted, Maya, Sora, here we come. <laughs> ring, ring, the alarm went off again. We looked out and then we freaked out. Once again, we had stopped too soon. Here we are in the late Cretaceous period, announced Ms. Frizzle. At this time, there was a sea right in the middle of our continent. Out the windows, enormous sea reptiles swam by. We're in the same place 25 million years later. How time flies. That's not all that flies. Overhead, flying reptiles glided past, dipping their beaks in the water to catch fish. All dinosaurs were land animals, by Gregory. No dinosaurs lived in the sea. During the Cretaceous, dinosaurs lived in places that were not covered by water. Sea reptiles and flying reptiles. Were they dinosaurs? By Tim. No, they were relatives of dinosaurs. I'm homesick. I'm seasick. At my old school, the bus didn't leak. Can't we find a drier time, Miss Frizzle? We were getting a little wet, so the frizz set the clock ahead again. <laughs> the next thing we knew, we had traveled forward two million years. 
Now we are at the very end of the Cretaceous period. This was the time of the last dinosaurs. This was the time we had been looking for. What was the Earth like then? The continents had drifted even further apart than before. Temperatures were cooler, there were seasons and polar ice caps. The sea has dried up in this part of the world, class. This is the time of the Myasaura. You let a couple of million years go by, and look what happens. As soon as we got off the bus, we saw that the Cretaceous world was different. The weather was cooler, there were colorful flowers and fruits everywhere, and there were lots of new plant-eating dinosaurs. These plant eaters could chew better than any other dinosaurs, said Ms. Frizzle. They had terrific teeth for grinding, and they had cheeks. Cheeks keep food from falling out, so plant eaters do not lose food they have already chewed. I didn't know cheeks were so important. Although some dinosaurs chewed their food, today's reptiles swallow it whole. We were watching the plant eaters chew when some tyrannosaurs approached. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Tyrannosaurus trouble. Tyrannosaurs were the largest meat eaters ever. Their mouths were giant fighting machines with 60 sharp, stabbing teeth. I feel sorry for the tooth fairy. The tyrannosaurs were scary enough. Then a pack of Troodon showed up too. They were small, but there were a lot of them. They began circling the bus to see what it was. I hope you're observing the Troodon class. Notice the slashing claw on each back foot. We'd like to observe them, Miss Frizzle, but we have to leave right away. In a hurry. We sized up the situation and ran. As we came over the crest of a hill, we saw an incredible sight. Wow! It was the Mayasaura nesting ground. It's dinosaur daycare. Why do we think Mayasaura babies grew up in nests by Wanda? When scientists found the first Mayasaura nests, they saw crushed eggshells showing that babies might have stayed in nests and stepped on shells. And they found skeletons of different sizes, showing that babies might have grown bigger in nests. They also found worn down baby teeth, showing that babies might have eaten food brought by parents. We weren't the only ones who had found the Myasaura. The Troodon had followed us. They invaded the nesting ground. The Myasaur parents defended their young. All at once, a sandstorm blew up. In minutes, a thick layer of sand covered the dinosaurs. Everything happened so fast, there was no way we could help the dinosaurs. Maybe they would become fossils. Oh, no! I dropped my model Myasaura. Hurry up and run! Back at the bus, Ms. Frizzle drove forward in time. We thought we were going home, but on the way... The bus screeched to a stop. We are in the very last minutes of the Cretaceous period, said Miss Frizzle. A bright light was shining in the sky. Notice that asteroid, said the Frizz. It's a huge rock from outer space. Soon it will hit the Earth. The asteroid will cause an enormous explosion. Black soot will fill the air and block out the sun. Plants won't grow, and millions of living things will become extinct, including the dinosaurs. Who knows what extinct means, Dorothy Ann? A kind of plant or animal becomes extinct when every single one has died. Miss Frizzle, could 
Could we leave before the asteroid hits? The frizz pushed the button and we started again. We're only 65 million years from home, class. Step on it, please. When the alarm rang, we were back in our own time. The paleontologists were worried about us and came looking for us. We gave them a tip on a fossil site. Go that way about a hundred steps and start digging. I'll bet you'll find some Myasaura nests. If you say so, Val. We'll send you a copy of our video. Then we waved goodbye and drove back to school. In the classroom, we made a chart of our trip to the dinosaurs. Just as we were finishing it, people started coming in for Visitor's Day. My Coelophysis lives in the Triassic period. My Allosaurus belongs in the Jurassic. Where should I put my Triceratops? I lost my dinosaur. Too bad. Hey Arnold, wasn't that dinosaur adventure amazing? This is my idea of adventure. That's my boy. The visitors admired everything. They had never seen such fabulous projects. Your bones are the best, honey. Thanks, Gran. Or such wonderful books. Why, Flory, this reads as if you were really there. It ought to. Or such an incredible video. Hey, look at those special effects. The dinosaurs seem so real. <laughs> Your teacher seems like an interesting person. She loves science. She loves lizards, too. And test tubes. And slime. And mold. And experiments. And she designs all her own clothes. 